Cool, thanks for joining us um, for Little Lounge. Today we're going to be covering uh, touch and in goal law. So, what we'll do, we'll run through a uh, bit about the law itself, uh, some of the definitions of, of touch and in goal. Um, of course, there's lots of different parts of law that are associated with each other. So, touch is also a part of the line out law and quick throw law in goal then starts to merge into the uh, law to do with restarts so we will cover off how they can interact with each other uh, also how is uh, how referees can apply the law as well uh, so it'll be a bit, a bit of a mixture of both um, that we'll go through today uh, i'll be checking back through the chat for questions and also on our uh, facebook page as well for questions that come up through there too um thanks for joining us those who are online live today and also to those of you who are watching this recorded as well coming out of it right well so our main resources that we can use for accessing any of our law and education opportunities uh so the obviously the laws of the game uh, our biggest resource that we that we pull from today we're mostly focusing on law 18 which covers the definition of touch and then really digging into what in goal means as well the reason we put the two together um we'll go through this a bit further is that uh, they they do have a lot of relativity to each other particularly when it comes to what is in touch what is in goal uh and what that might, what that means for us as as players and referees uh, also, on our Bay Plenty Rugby website, we have our laws and education pages um, where we break down uh, different parts of the game um, and also our introduction to refereeing workbook and course as well. Right, so going through touch. So with touch itself, that is the area alongside the field of play that the touch lines is, includes all the area beyond the touch lines as well and anything that's touching it and a part of it. So the touch and goal area itself is, is the same, it's just an extension of the touch lines that run through into the end goal. And the plane of touch, when we talk about that, refers to an imaginary wall that extends up from the lines all the way up into the, into the air above it. So think of that vertical space rising above it, that's what we mean by the plane of touch. So looking at when players in touch, so you can see here on the diagram where those touch lines and the touch and goal lines are indicated on our field. Okay. So the ball is in touch or touch and goal when a ball, ball carrier touches the touch line or anything beyond it. I think the, the, the definition of what is in touch is relatively simple and that one of the first concepts that we are able to grasp pretty easily in the game of rugby. It's also in touch, so if, any, if a player or anything outside of the touchline uh, catches or holds the ball, it's pretty key. That last part of the definition is catches or holds. And we'll talk a bit more about what that means for us later on as well. So if the, if the ball has reached that plane, and we would imagine that, that vertical space going up, uh, when it is caught, the, the catcher themselves has not, has not taken the ball into touch. So if they are, if, if you are in touch already and that ball has not reached touch, sorry, if, if you're in touch already and the ball has reached that plane of touch, you're not the one that put it in, that put it out or, or took it into touch just yourself. So it's uh, irrelevant as to, um, as to whether you're in or out. But if the ball hasn't reached a plane of touch, so if it is still in, above the field of play, and it's caught or picked up, then the person who has picked it up or caught it has then taken it across the plane or across the across that plane of touch. Then they are the one that is taken into touch. There's a bit of a change from how law used to be. Law used to have uh, you could if the ball was moving, you could have a foot out or something like that, and then move the ball across the, the plane and and it was taken out by the other team. However, now if you are in touch and that ball hasn't reached the plane, it's clear and simple. You're the one that's taken it across. So with that in mind, we can also think about 
when is plane not in touch. So if the ball does reach the plane, but it is caught or knocked or kicked by a player who is in the playing area. So anyone who's in still inside the playing area, and that if that ball has reached the plane but hasn't touched anything outside yet, and they manage to get it back into the into the playing area, then it doesn't touch anything outside, then that ball is not in touch yet. So if they jump from within or outside the playing area and catch the ball and land inside the playing area. So it doesn't matter where they start from, they can start from row Z uh, in the grandstand. Um, if they make their jump, catch the ball while they're in mid, mid flight and land inside the field of play, uh, the ball's still live. So we're not in touch. There was an excellent example of that, of a, probably the best example I've seen of a player knowing the law uh, was Geordie Barrett uh, in the Chiefs versus Hurricanes and before, we, before the lockdown. Uh, who pulled that off from a from a Chiefs penalty kick? Started to probe out four or five meters outside uh, the field of play. Ran, let, jumped, caught the ball in midair, landed inside the field of play, and play on, and prevented the penalty uh, penalty kick for touch, and prevented the Chiefs line out. Aaron Cruden was screaming at Chaka Yaka Piper. Didn't work. So it's not in touch or touching goal if. A player jumps from the playing area and then knock the ball back into the playing area before landing touch and touch and goal, uh, which is similar to our first definition as well. So the first one referred to a player that stayed in the play, um, playing area. The second um, talks about one who gets it back in, but even if they land out, that's totally fine. Um, if also a player, if they are in touch themselves, so long as they don't hold it, and that's where that key thing, holding or holding that ball, they can kick or knock it or whatever, bat it um, to prevent it from going out. Um, so long as it hasn't reached that plane of touch yet. That ball's not there yet, they can stop the ball from going out, even if they're, they're out themselves, so long as they don't hold the ball. That's a pretty uh, crucial concept to, to grasp because that also has impact on, uh, on our in goal law as well. Okay, so just, we'll just have a little quick look at this video. I'll get you to have a think for yourselves whether this is in touch or not. And just thinking about our definitions that we've, that we've gone through so far. No try guys, foot in touch. <whistles> Time on. The key thing we're thinking about is that holding. So, roll through. So the ball is in touch in this case. So the player has held the ball. So they haven't held it for long, but they have held it enough that they've changed the course of it. They haven't battered it, they haven't knocked it. Uh, and the player's foot, as you saw, was already in touch when they performed that action. So the key part is that they are they have done enough to hold the ball and change its and change its course rather than just knock or bat it back. Uh, so the, the ball is in touch because that player is already there. So the ball hasn't reached the plane yet, however, they have held the ball. Cool. Right. Now that we've uh, defined what touch is, we'll go through our in goal law itself. So the in goal, the definition of the in goal is the area between the goal line and the dead ball line and in between the touch and goal lines. Okay, so it does not include the goal line itself. Uh, sorry, it does not include the dead ball line itself, sorry. It does include, uh, and it, but it does include the goal line. It does not include the touch and goal lines either. Also, the goal posts uh, and the padding are part of the end goal as well. Okay. So in terms of grounding the ball itself, so there's uh, various ways that the ground ball can be grounded in the different situations. So if by holding it and touching it to the ground, uh, you can press it down with your hands, your arm, or the front of the or of your body from between your waist and your neck. So any part within that zone from waist to neck, uh, and including your arms, 
that is that is counted as the body. So it doesn't have to be your arms or your hands. With different players grounding the ball, if an attacking player grounds the ball, it is, it is deemed to be a try. If a defending player grounds the ball, it's deemed, deemed to be a touchdown. And those two definitions are pretty crucial as we go through our law here. Is there doubt about any uh, about who actually grounded the ball first? Uh, play's always restarted with a five meter scrum to the attacking team. And that's if there's any doubt if it's a simultaneous uh, simultaneous grounding or if there's a doubt about who got there first, uh, then that's the referee can only rule on that. I'll just go back to our previous slide. Um, there is a that old saying of benefit of the doubt. Um, and it's uh, it's fairly well, fairly good mantra to have as a referee that if you can't make stuff up, so if you don't know, then you can't then you can't rule on it. You can't rule on what might have been. So um, if you have that doubt and you and you haven't seen a grounding first by the attacking team, it's pretty simple. You can't rule on the try even if they even if they actually did score a try. If you hit, you didn't see it, you can't award it. And that's and that's. Uh, it's really the approach that referees need to take in the end goal. Scoring a try. So on the goal line itself is a part of the end goal. So that would be a try. And we talked about the goalpost before. So the goalpost and the padding are part of the goal line. Uh, for that to occur, uh, the ball needs to be grounded against the goalposts uh, at the base. Um, so it can be against the ground itself in the field of play. Um, but if it's pressed against the ground and the um, post pad itself, then it's a try. Um, a ruck or scrum, once they cross over the, once the ball actually is on the goal line itself, then the ruck or scrum is, is, is over. Uh, so the ball can then be played by either team. No, there's no offside lines by that point. Uh, so depending on who gets there first, uh, either be a try or a touchdown. Scoring a try, so if any player's momentum carries them over the goal line, uh, it's a try. Or if their momentum doesn't get there, if they're tackled and they're short of the goal line, if they can reach out and place the ball immediately on the goal line from where they are. So it's a, it's a reaching and a placing, placing motion. It's not a, an extra movement to be able to get themselves into a position to be able to reach and place. Uh, and, that's, and that's pretty key when they look for those double movement type calls. Player in touch or touch and goal is not carrying the ball, they can also score a try, uh, which is slightly confusing to a lot of people, but it is a, uh, it is a natural rule. So if you're actually outside of the field of play and the ball is on the ground, you can reach, reach in while you're still out and touch the ball down. And if you think back to our law with touch, uh, that's a similar situation the ball being inside the field of play, if it hasn't crossed that plane yet, you can bat it, kick it, do whatever, if you're outside the field of play, if you're in touch, and the ball wouldn't be in touch yet. It's the same principle here, that you're outside the field of play, you're not holding the ball, you're the, if you're pressing the ball down straight away, uh, because the ball's on the ground, uh, then again, the, the ball, uh, the try is scored, uh, because it's an instant motion. So for all of the above, uh, the defending player performing the same action results in a touchdown. Okay, so if we just flick back through our scoring the try. So if you look at number one again, on the goal line is part of the end goal. So if a defender puts it down on the end goal, it's a touchdown. Goal posts and padding. If a defender grounds the ball against their own goal posts, against the ground and, uh, and field of play, again, it's a touchdown. Uh, ruck or scrum, if, they have, if you have a ruck or a scrum and it's back, you're backed onto your own goal line, if you reach back or if the ball's on the goal line itself and you push it down, it's a touchdown. Uh, or even, yeah, yes, yeah, so even if it's the attacking ball in a ruck or a scrum, once that ball reaches there, if you're the first one to get your hand there as, as a defender, you can perform a touchdown there. Uh, and then momentum, if you're Def running backwards, defending your own line, uh, and momentum carries you back over your goal line and you ground the ball, touchdown. If you're tackled near your own goal line, you reach out and place the ball back onto the goal line. If the 
uh, it's a touchdown. And again, if you're in touch, you can also ground the ball uh, from being in touch and it's a touchdown as well. Now, ball being played into the end goal itself. So if the ball is kicked dead, uh, kicked dead by the attackers, uh, there is an option of a 22 meter restart or a scrum at the place of the kick and the defending team get that option. Uh, note though that attempted kicks a goal are always a 22 meter restart. So whether that's a um, attempted penalty or an attempted drop kick, uh, if that goes dead um, or touch and goal, then the option is all, uh, sorry, the, uh, the restart is always a 22 meter restart. The ball's held up, so it's taken into the end goal by the attacking team. Uh, and it's and is held up, then there's the attacker's feed, five meter scrum. Now, if the ball touches the corner post, then we'll cover this a little bit more soon as well. But if it touches the corner post and deflects into touch, it's a line out. So the corner post basically acts as an inanimate object. Uh, it doesn't, the it, post itself is not, uh, it, if it, that ball hitting it doesn't make the ball dead, it can just act like the goalposts themselves, so they can bounce off the goalposts and, and then wherever it ends up is, is what happens. Um, the ball deflecting into the end goal and then grounded by an attacker, you've then got to try. <clears throat> and then if it deflects into the end goal and is grounded by a defender, you've got a, a touchdown, so there you've got a 22 meter restart. Um, so I'd, on that's on the basis that it was put into the end goal by the attacking team. So simultaneous contact. So if there is simultaneous contact with a touch, touch and goal or dead ball lines and the ball or a player holding the ball and grounding it, the line takes precedence. Okay, so it's a bit like our simultaneous grounding. Um, we're unsure, so we can't award a try. Uh, so we award a scrum uh, to the attacking team. In this case, if there is simultaneous contact with any of the lines, then the line takes precedence and we apply whatever uh, restart happens after that. Um, so if it's, if there's simultaneous contact with touch from a player holding the ball, then we go to a line out. If there's simultaneous touch and goal from an attacking player, um, if they go touch and goal or dead ball, then we go back for a 22 um, and things like that. And also if the ball, any part of the ball, when that's grounded, um, uh, if, if that's makes simultaneous contact with a line and the end goal, uh, then the line itself takes precedence. And uh, we apply that, apply that restart. So there we see the ball being grounded simultaneously on uh, in the end goal and on the touch and goal lines. Therefore, the line takes precedence, uh, and it's no try. It's it's a twenty-two meter restart. Just on that previous note, um, that that is this is quite different to that strange situation we had before with the uh, with the player in touch being able to ground the ball and score a try. Note that with the player in touch scoring uh, scoring a try from being in touch, um, that they are that the ball is on the ground itself already and in the end goal, and they the first action is that they are pressing it. So their first contact with the ball is scoring the try or touchdown. Whereas with this one, it refers to a player uh, holding the ball, making simultaneous contact either with their body and in the line, or if the ball itself makes simultaneous contact with the line. Defending players in the end goal. Uh, so this, this really ties into our touch laws as well. So if you think uh, when these laws were redone in 2017, um, they're all brought in line with each other. So all the lines on the rugby field, um, all of a sudden had the same sort of application. Uh, they all had, they had that concept of the plane going up. They all had the concept of, um, a, if that ball hasn't reached that plane, any player that's behind that line has taken it across that line. Uh, so it took out all of that um, previous situation that we had with players putting one foot back and then grabbing a moving ball and taking it back into the end goal or dead or things like that. So. That's all gone now. So all the lines all over the field now have the same concept applied to them. So, so if any part of the defending player is in the end goal, then they are considered to be in, in goal. Uh, so they got one foot back um, or any part of their body back 
into the end goal, then um, there they are in the end goal. That's de making, obviously depending on them not also being on uh, being in touch or over the dead ball line themselves. Uh, if they are in goal and they catch or pick up a ball, and that ball is still on the field of play, so if it hasn't crossed that plane of the of the goal line yet, then they are the one that's taking the ball into the end goal. Uh, and if and in the same in the same thought as that, if they are on or be, on or beyond the dead ball line or touching goal lines, and they catch or pick up a ball that still hasn't yet met the plane of those lines, either the, the touching goal or the dead ball lines. And they are the one that's made the ball dead. Um, restarts are relevant. We won't go into restarts at the moment just now because that's a whole nother uh, that's a whole nother session with uh, the restart restart kicks. Um, but this is important, particularly uh, when thinking about a kick from an attacking player. Um, if that's the defender that's taken the ball dead, then it eliminates the option. They got no option anymore of. Uh, of the scrum back where the kicker, the, where the attacking player kicked it, uh, they've only got that re that 22 meter restart. And our last little bit about the corner flag post. So we spoke before about how it's an inanimate object and the ball hits it uh, as play on, uh, and we carry on to whatever happens. However, we're going to look at now what actually happens if the ball is grounded against the corner flag post itself, and this is where the corner flag itself now becomes, uh, starts to mean something. So if the ball or ball carrier touches the corner flag or corner flag post without otherwise being in touch or touching goal, play continues. So that's kind of what we were going on before. Okay, so you can dive in mid-air um, and you can score a try uh, if you touch the corner flag post. Yep. So he's made contact with the corner flag post, but he's not in touch, none of his body's in touch. The ball has been grounded in the first instance, in the uh, in the in goal, so therefore it is a try. However, if he had uh, grounded that ball simultaneously with the corner flag post itself, uh, the corner flag, the base of the corner flag post um, becomes a part of the touching uh, the touching goal um, the touching goal area. So. If an attacking player does ground that ball against the base of that post, um, with, and simultaneously when they ground it with the again uh, on the goal line uh, or the end goal area, um, then again don't forget the lines take precedence. So uh, that would be a twenty. That would be a touch and goal on twenty-two meter restart. And we'll just speak briefly uh, about what uh, roles assistant referees and touch judges have when applying our touch and in goal laws. Okay, uh, we won't go into all of the duties of uh, assistant referees, as there is a pretty wide scope. Um, primary duties of uh, an assistant referee, uh, so they adjudicate when the ball's touched, touch and goal, dead, um, the mark for a line out, and the place for a restart, for which team throws the ball in. Um, so obviously, most of their primary duty there is caught up with. What we've just covered today uh kicks a goal and foul play touch judges themselves so touch judges are slightly different um assistant referees are usually appointed by a union or uh, are officially appointed uh, they're usually a registered referee touch judges are usually um people that you have that you ask to to run touch for you at a game that may or may not be a referee um, and they are usually quite often a member of the of one of the teams uh, or one of their supporters or managers. And their their roles really just consist around adjudicating when that ball is in touch, touch and goal, dead, um, marks for a line out, place for a restart, which team throws the ball in. Um, that's their main, uh, and, and adjudicating on the kicks at goal. Um, foul play really is only, they might have some input to that, but uh, that's a slightly different. Uh, that's up to the referee as to how they want to manage that with them. So some of the abilities under the law that the uh, referees and the assistant referees have, uh, so they can consult the referee can consult them about anything, um, and also any of their duties, and those duties being touch and touch and goal. So once a decision's made, uh, if a touch judge or an AR has some extra information either by raising their flag or coming across and speaking with the referee 
um, that referee can then take that into account and if, if need be, they can alter their decision. Uh, so um, when it comes to adjudicating in, and you're, you are running as AR or, or touch judge, the referee really will rely on you for any calls uh, around those lines. Uh, groundings really do belong to the referee. Uh, they should own those. Uh, if you, if a AR or a touch judge can assist with that, that's excellent. However, what they are looking for from you is you ruling on, you accurately on those lines. It has something been grounded, has the ball been grounded there as a player in touch. Um, that's really what you're looking for. So getting yourself into good positions around that is, uh, is key. Well, guys, so that uh, concludes our presentation on around our laws uh, with touch, touch and goal, and how an assistant referee and touch judge relates to those. Uh, if there are any questions, I'll open up to chat. Um, you can either, um, I'd see there was one question that was popped in there, uh, and yeah, I think we've covered that. So the, um, the Geordie Barrett uh, running, catching the ball, and landing in the field of play. Again, yep, that was, yeah. To me, one of the most remarkable um, piece of knowledge from a player, knowing the law and making it really work in their favour. Because I think, I, I think, you know, most people would probably consider that actually allowed the Hurricanes to then go on and win the game. Um, so game-changing law knowledge from a from a player, which is really cool to see. Uh, right, uh, are there any questions? And does anyone have any conversation that they want to open up? And you can turn your videos and mics on for this if you want like to share. Yeah, Cam, you there? Yes, I'm here, yeah. Oh, okay. Hey, uh, I think um, pretty well covered by, by from, from what you presented. I do have one question around the uh, defending player picking a ball up uh, in the in goal. Because mm -hmm. uh, to pick up a moving ball, particularly if it's rolling across the ground, there is a little bit of pressure on the ground. Would you consider yep. that as a touchdown or a clean pick up and play on? Yeah, great, great question. So... So you're saying that they are putting pressure on the ball uh, before they before they pick it up? Well, the ball's moving. Say, yep. I don't know, a player passed it back, he fumbled the ball, and the ball's moving across the ground, but it's actually on the ground. Mm. And as he goes to attempt to pick up the ball and continue to play, there's actually a bit of force there when the ball's actually on the ground and picking it up. Would you consider that as a touchdown, or would you consider mm. that as a play on? A yeah, tricky one to think about with um, without, a, I guess, a... Uh, uh, visual example, but uh, uh, it's, I guess it's whatever you, you you deem it to be. Like, are they uh, think about what they're trying to trying to do or trying to achieve? Like, are they really actually trying to pick it up um, and you know and, and and play on, or are they actually making a play there to to push the ball down? Um, it's probably yeah. I guess you probably look at what they are trying to do because I think naturally, sometimes to control the ball, you know, you might end up pressing it down. Uh, or you might end up, you know, controlling it against your foot or, um, you know, as, as you go, yeah, particularly for the moving ball, like you say. Um, so there may be an aspect of the ball sort of, you know, pressing down a little bit. But really, yeah, if, they're, if, they're, if, they're, if their action, like if you look at their action, their action really is to pick, to pick the ball up, uh, then as a referee, I would, I would probably interpret that as them picking the ball up. They haven't actually pressed it down uh, and, and play on. Yeah, because we do get questioned about that a couple of times throughout a season. Mm. And, and, and like you said, the, um, the observation is, yes, they were trying to pick the ball up, but by, by, by definition of the law, it actually say any sort of pressure can, can, consists as a touchdown. So, Yeah. I'll just go across, I'll just drag across our in goal law in here, and I'll, maybe I'll just pull up what you're, um, what you're referring to. So... Okay, so defending player grounding the ball and the end goal results in a touchdown. Um, so, where are we? Defending player in the goal. Yeah, so this really comes into play really with the, when it comes to the restart. Uh, with, when it comes to the restart law. Okay, so they have to pick it up immediately, uh, I guess is what you're referring to. Um, so it probably comes into um, either from kickoff law or from kicks put down into 
well, I guess, yeah, I guess, I guess any, any time the ball's made, you know, made dead there. Um, yeah. Yeah. No, it's, a, it, it's a 50-50 one, but by definition of law, if the player's picking up a moving ball on the ground, there's, mm. there's, there's actually force on the ball. So you would actually call it as a 20, um, either a 22 or 5 metre five meter scrum, depending on what action the ball took to get it into the end goal. But yeah, like you said before, common sense would say play on because the player's trying to pick the ball up. But by yeah. definition, the law is actually saying that's actually a touchdown and you've got to proceed to whatever restart is yeah. resulted I'll, in and how the ball got in. Is that correct? Yeah, so I'll, I'll go to that law that you're actually talking about there. Yeah, and you're right. Um, it's I guess that's the beautiful thing about laws. Uh, is, that they're, is that they're there to be interpreted <laughs> and uh, we can you know the beautiful thing about laws is that they are laws and not rules uh, and that the you know, common sense can uh, can be mixed and mingled with them which is fantastic um, so if you look at uh, there we go um, so you talk, actually you're talking about the definition of grounding a ball is that what you're talking about <laughs> Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Again, I'd apply common sense. Uh, if if the if the if the player is making a play to pick up the ball, that's that's clearly the action that they're trying to do, and they pick and they do pick up the ball, and they don't clearly push down or force it in the way you know in a in a motion that you know um, that, that that shows that they're grounding the ball. Then I'd say play on. Um, Chances are, as a referee, we're probably going to be, um, you know, not not exactly right next to them as well. So, uh, it's, it's like if it's a long kick or something like that. Um, so, if they're making that that pick up play to, to pick up the ball, then I would say we go. So, we're looking at the grounding the ball. So, picking up the ball is not grounding it. Um, player may pick up the ball and go and ground it elsewhere and go. Um, so, maybe if we just check out this this example here. If you just watch the way that this player picks up the ball, so kick put down into the end goal. I see you can see the screen, right? Yeah. Yes, yeah, so he just picks up the ball. The action is to pick up the ball, and then and then it touches it down. So, yeah, I think I think most of most most occasions, probably nine 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 times out of a hundred, those are relatively straightforward in terms of um, yeah, they're making an action to pick up the ball, they didn't even force it. Hey, Pete, if, if I can just butt in here. Yeah. Um, good observation there, Reese. Um, I think from a referee point of view, though, if you, if you want to take away from the law and just kind of act on the body language or the, the next action of that player, um, I think that's going to be a far easier decision mm. rather than, like, trying to put it on the referee to make that decision. So mm. if, if there's pressure from the opposition, um, then I think what they're going to do is just kind of make it dead anyway. Um, but if these a bit of time, um, they're probably going to pick it up and try to make that next play. Um, mm. So kind of, it just depends on what that player is doing, as as Cam just alluded to there. That's just my thing. Yeah, I'll just refer back to one of the. Yeah, I'll just refer to like one uh, a, a game that I had um, last year, where the team was clearly under pressure and the ball was thumbing across the ground and he was kind of fumbling to pick it up. And then eventually he did clear it while while the ball was on the ground. But then the question, um, but the question that was posed to me during the game, because I because initially I did play on, but they get um, but initially I was I was asked by the captain, so hey, he actually forced the ball and trying to pick the ball up because he was kind of fumbling across the ground. Mm. Okay. Yeah. So, um, but I eventually um, did say just just play on through the through um, through that instance. I think yeah. he's gonna um pull the strike to the. The definition and um yeah like, like you're saying the definition of the law so the ball can be grounded and in goal and then if you look at the second one by pressing it down so by pressing down on it with the hand or hands um, arm or arms or the the front of the player's body to waist and neck um so this is this does actually say we do need to press down on it um so i guess if you're trying to pick up a ball i uh, yeah i guess yeah think about as brando's saying what is the action are you actually trying to are you are you picking it up are you fumbling it across the ground? Uh, it does then go on to say picking up a ball is not grounding it. And I guess um, attempting to pick up a ball, in my in, in my eyes, is not grounding it either. Um, yes. Even if you're making an absolute meal of it. 
Um, <laughs> but yeah, so for me, they have to be looking at like, are they are they trying to press it down? Uh, and if not, are they or are they trying to pick it up? And yeah, and that's uh, and that's the instance that I went off as well. Yeah, mm-hmm. exactly. I was actually trying to pick it up. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he did probably push it a couple of times, but he was actually wasn't trying to touch down. He was actually trying to pick it up. Yeah, but it, yeah. but you do get questioned by um by captains at the next breakdown and so forth. But yeah. it's just nice to yeah. know that you know what your interpretation is 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 also correct. You know, because exactly. yeah, things happen so quick. And the chances are that you're probably going to know the law slightly better than them. Um, so if you if you're confident in your decision, you say, "Look, they're trying to pick the ball up." Uh, that's that means that they can play on. Um, they're probably going to accept that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the other one I want to just reflect on just very quickly too was that um, ball caught um, from outside of play and, let, and the player lands inside the field of play. Yep. The old Jordy Bear. Yep. yep. Yeah, I had a couple of those in uh, Waikiki. Uh, Waikiki. Um, Waikiki were playing Rua Toki. We had about four, three or four cases of that. Really? And uh, um, Waikiki team actually been blowing off at me. I said, play on. Mm. And uh, yep, I was um, I was right. So I have seen it a few times in one game. So uh, yeah, there's more than just one Jordy Barrett boat around exactly. out there. Exactly. I think once, uh, yeah, so it's, kind of, it's that kind of law that once players learn it and know it, they're like, oh, hang on, I can use this. This works well. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But it's amazing how much actually players don't actually realise the rules. So they, they try and tip, tip each other themselves <laughs> down the sideline and try and bat it back in. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> and oh. I mean, you could, yeah, you can just say you've been consistent in that ruling all game. So um, mm-hmm. there's no point for them to having a go at you, you know. So, um, yeah, good, good job. <laughs> yeah, no, it was a good game, that one. <laughs> Yeah, I suppose, Reese. I just want to touch base on your first scenario. Um, I really think that that's where um, players need to own their decision, um, whatever they, whatever decision they make. Too, like it's it's a fair question from the captain to ask you later in the game or at the next stoppage. You know what what happened there. But I think it's it's really important that players do own their um, own actions as well. So, mm. and and that's where for us as referees, kind of having those. Um, skills up our sleeves or in our toolbox to just refer to, look, the player made that decision, I'm just going to go on whatever his decision was or his action was. Um, but I suppose that also comes with a bit of experience and um, getting to referee different games and getting to know different players. So, um, yeah, it, it's good to have those kind of experiences so you know what to do next time. Um, yeah. Yeah, no, yeah. cheers for that. I mean, we, I mean, we make we make hundred decisions throughout the game anyway, whether mm. whether we're right or whether we're wrong, and whether the captain agrees or not. So, uh, yeah, but I think it all comes down to um, one club, and everyone kind of viewing things in the same way. So, yeah, yeah, that's yeah. been really good. I know I've got a we've got a uh, um, coach on the line at the moment as well. Um, I know that. Probably touch and 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 in goals. Probably have started with probably the one of the more straightforward uh, law areas, and haven't dove straight into anything like the dark arts of the scrum or the or the breakdown at the moment. Um, but yeah, anything from a coaching perspective at all, uh, there, Perry? Uh, no, not really. Um, so that's one it, we're trying to upskill our boys by educating them on the the rules and yeah. Um, like the Geordie Barrett case was a prime example. I'm, I'm probably in a better position, I think, because we were using these rules last year down in, in Canterbury. So, um, yeah. yeah, just it's for us, it's getting the footage to um, to show the boys yeah. an example of the law. Like um, the Geordie Barrett one was, yeah, prime example. And um, just, yeah. those, just those changes... You know, like the foot foot on the line and catching it is now considered taking it out. Um, and I'm hoping that in the season we're going to to are going to catch out at a number of the other clubs uh, with that rule. Yeah, and and that's and that's uh, exactly that's the thing. Like, you, if you if you know the law and you can make it use work to your advantage. Um, 
in terms of footage, yeah, there are a number of good clips associated on the actual Laws of the Game site. Um, the Geordie Barrett one itself, gosh, I was looking for that everywhere. Uh, I know there were yeah. a couple of clips floating around and they, they disappeared off a couple of sites and I couldn't actually get a clip. I was desperately trying to actually find it. Um, apparently, they didn't, they didn't put it in the highlights package. I don't know why. It was like the highlight of the game for me. But <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> No, that and the Hurricanes winning. Um, probably shouldn't say that. Um, <laughs> but yeah, no, it's a um, yeah. So getting the clips and actually seeing what can be done is uh, is, is pretty key. But I've got some other uh, Perry. I'll, I'll actually flick you a few other things as well. Because you got some other clips of you know, of in touch, not in touch as well. So I'll, I might just uh, when I put this presentation up um, and I send the link out, I'll also link those clips in as well and just put them in a in a separate web page on our website, and you can have a look at those clips and refer back to them too. Yeah, that, that'd be great. That'd be fantastic. Brilliant. Any other questions out there at all, guys, or discussion topics? No, well, if you haven't got anything else, guys, um, thanks for joining me today. Appreciate it. And uh, if you've been watching online uh, down the line, then uh, hopefully this has been useful for you too. Um, we'll be rolling in again on Monday. Uh, I'll be looking at line out law, uh, which is a uh, fairly site which rolls quite nicely off the back of our of our touch of our touch law as well. So we have a good grounding, um, and then I'll be posting uh, the rest of the topics up um, on our website for Monday as well. Um, but we're running these tw sessions twice a week, ten a.m. Mondays and Thursdays, and again they'll all be recorded and uh, popped up in line. So if you can't make it, just flip through some uh, some questions, and I can answer them within the session themselves. Well, thanks very much, guys. Uh, have a good rest of the day.